And so we are beginning at last to see signs that the truth, which cannot in the end be indefinitely suppressed, is fighting its way back again. And real measurement trumps the models. Now, here I'm going to expect you to get the right answer. If global mean surface temperature increases, will radiation escaping from Earth to space A, increase, B, remain unchanged, or D, dimin C, diminish? Hands up for an increase. One, two, yes, very good. Uh, those who think it remains unchanged, anyone? No. Anyone who thinks it will diminish? No. Hands up who haven't put their hands up. <laughs> Hands up all those who are still awake. Right, what we've got here, what we've got here is a fascinating... Here we, here we are, a collection of eminent scientists. And here is the most basic question we need to know the answer to, which is, if, we, if the surface warms, will there be more radiation getting out into space or less? That's what it's all about. And we don't know the answer, because they've made sure we don't know the answer. Because the answer, as it turns out, is most uncongenial. Let's have a look. Here is what all the models say. As the temperature from left to right rises, so the outgoing radiation declines. All the models show the same. Globalised groupthink, I call this, because no model of a chaotic object, if it were independent from all the other models, would ever show this good a degree of agreement. And that is how we know that all these models are being fudged together. They're being cooked together. The word they have for this is intercomparison. I call it fraud. But let's see what actually happens when after 20 years of meticulous measurement with a satellite, you measure the correlation between changes in surface temperature and changes in outgoing radiation. Now look at the middle panel. I think you will see that that is rather different. And what that means is that the radiation isn't staying down here to close go cl cause global warming, it's getting out, it's escaping. And there, if you like, is a final checksum, which you can do again using that equation over there. What it tells you is you're going to get practically no global warming for a doubling of CO2. Yep, I'm, we're, we're doing pretty well. Um, all you need to know about the economics of global warming is on this one slide, and that is that you get one quarter, one fortieth of a degree of cooling or forestalled warming if you close down the entire global economy for one year. That's how little difference it makes. So my conclusion then is this. If we want to reassert science over the lies of these fraudsters, just a few of which I've shown you here, then what should we do about global warming? Well, at Copenhagen and elsewhere, we should have the courage just to do nothing, because the correct policy when dealing with a non-problem <coughs> is to have the courage just to do nothing. Thank you very much. Are you sorry about science, or do you think it's about the new world order, like the Lisbon Treaty? The treaty, Lisbon Treaty. Thank you. I think that's a very good question, and the answer is this. I've read the draft Copenhagen Treaty. How many of you have read the draft Copenhagen Treaty? How many of you have seen it, seen it mentioned? Now, I'm talking about the Copenhagen Treaty. How many of you have seen the Copenhagen Treaty? One or two. How many of you have seen it in any mainstream news medium? No, not one. There is your problem. That treaty says there's going to be a world government. It's going to have powers of taxation equivalent to half the US defence budget every year for the US and about the same for everywhere else. It's going to have powers to close down all patent rights. It's going to have a powers to close down all free markets and regulate them by public policy and not by freedom. All of these points are in that draft treaty. This is the treaty which would bring to an end the freedom you have had in Germany for 20 years. It would bring to an end the freedom of the West, which has led to prosperity throughout the world to, to a very large degree. All of that would go. And not a single major mainstream news medium has mentioned that any of these provisions, or indeed any other provisions, are in the draft treaty. They have been silent about it. That, whatever it is, is not science. It is politics, and politics of the very nastiest kind. I'm Christopher Monckton. If you've just enjoyed this video about Climategate, 
I want you to do something right now. I want you to log on on the web to www.allpainnogain.org. That's www.allpainnogain.org. And I want you to sign the petition against cap and trade. In doing that, you'll be helping to preserve the freedom and the prosperity of the Western world. I also want you to support the Committee for a Constructive Tomorrow. That's C-F-A-C-T, CFACT. That's one of the most effective organizations I know. It's an environmental organization that isn't against the environment and it isn't against industry. It's in favor of making both work together in harmony. So remember, CFACT is the organization I want you to support. I want you to Twitter, I want you to Facebook, I want you to get on the web, get this video out there, get the message out there, and once again, allpainnogain.org, please do it now. Thank you.